Okay, so um, we have a test on Monday. Yeah, it's too bad um, for you. It's okay for me. Um, <laughs> that's true, but I don't think that far ahead. So for me, I'm just like, ah, Monday, I'm just sitting there. Um, okay, so here's what the test is on. Um, the topics are just everything up through particle kinematics. And remember, it's cumulative, so you need to, you know, refresh your memory on the old stuff. Um, no kinetics. So what we started talking about last time was kinetics. Uh, we talked about free body diagrams and Newton's third law. Um, and none of that's going to be on there. No forces or anything like that. Um, so uh, anything new we talk about today, that's not going to be on the test. Uh, I'd be happy to start by answering any questions anybody has relevant to the test. Uh, answering any homework questions that you had trouble with on that stuff. And then once you're done with that, if, you know, if there's time left, uh, I'll keep going with kinetics. Um, so first, does anyone have any sort of general questions not related to specific problems? Okay, any, oh, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. When when you know it is a function of like a position thing, not a function of time. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay, so if you have, um, uh, let's see, how does this work? If you have, um, something like, uh, so what kind of problem would this come up in? Um, so if you have, if you're trying to figure out, okay, so if you have like, um, natural log of x is equal to, say, t squared. OK. Um, and that natural log, and af OK, after you do the integration, you have natural log of x plus c is equal to t squared, right? So. Um, and you're trying to come up with x as a function of time. And so uh, the way to do that is to take, I never know the wording here, but you take E and the power is, you know, whatever is on each side. So this is E to the power of natural log X plus C. And over here you have E to the T squared. Um, and the, now the thing that you're asking about is because of the power rules. So um, this is equal to e to the natural log x times e to the c. And uh, e to the c is just a new constant. So I just rename that. And so now we have like, or and if I would have called this c1, you know, since these are all just arbitrary names, call that c1, this is c1. Now I'm just going to call e to the c1 new c, you know. And so you have c times e to the natural log of x, which is just x. That's what you're asking about, right? OK, so so maybe the step, step that I sort of skipped in there is that um, the, the um, exponent rule here says that this is equal to e to this power times e to this power, and e to the power of ar arbitrary constant is just a new arbitrary constant. Any other questions? Yes. Mm 
oh, positive or negative direction? Okay. Yes. Okay. So um, for for this kind of problem, um, where you want acceleration, but your starting point. is a velocity as a function of some kind of position, okay? So the thing that complicates this is um, if you have velocity as a function of time, you can just take the time derivative and then you have acceleration. But if you have velocity as a function of position, you have to use the chain rule thing because acceleration is not just the derivative of velocity is the derivative of velocity with respect to time. That's all, you know. And so you have to use this chain rule thing. So for example, um, if you have, um, so if you're given velocity um, as a function of, let's say Z, so that's like the Z component of the position vector, okay? And we want to find the acceleration as a function of z. You can't just, you can't just take the derivative of v with respect to z and think of that as the acceleration because um, acceleration is dv dt, not dv dz. So the way you have to do that is the acceleration as a function of z is dv dz times dz dt. Now, you would think maybe you're sort of stuck here um, because you're multiplying by this dz dt and you still have to have that dependence on time. But the key thing here is that since we're already given this velocity vector and dz dt is just the z component of the velocity vector. So then this is just v dz times this z component. And you can, and you have all that stuff as functions of z. Okay, so that's the, that's like background on this idea. Um, so if the problem gives you Um, the velocity as a function of position, any position component, any position variable. That thing above is all you have to do. So that's what you're hoping for. If instead you're given a path and a speed, then This is you. <laughs> um, because, uh, and there's a first step before you get to that. So then the first step is to calculate the velocity as a function of position. Mm -hmm. 
using the fact that the velocity vector is equal to um, the speed, capital V is the speed, times a unit vector um, that's tangent to the path. And you also have to, it has to be in the chosen direction. So along a given path, there are two possible directions. The thing can be moving in the direction where your parameter is increasing or where your parameter is decreasing, you know, like increasing X or decreasing X. Um, so in the direction of the motion. Okay, so let's do, let's start an example like that and at least just get to the point where, um, where we see, you know, where we get to doing the chain rule and stuff. Really the biggest pain about problems like this um, is that you end up taking derivatives of really messy stuff because you're dividing by the magnitude of the vector. And so you have a square root of stuff on the bottom and you have to take the derivative of that. And so on tests, what I tend to do is either have you do one half of this kind of problem or the other half. I have you either come up with velocity as a function of position, or I have, or I give you a velocity as a function of position and have you calculate acceleration. Because if I put both of those together, I can't really avoid the messy derivative. Yes. Yeah, I was just going to do one like that because I think the, the math comes out pretty nice on those. Right. Maybe. Let's let's go through it and let's see how messy it is. I don't really remember. I just remember it comes out a little nicer than the other ones. Um, okay, so let's say this thing's going through a helix or, you know, helical motion. Um, and so if the coordinate system is this, then let's say the path is like that. And let's say that it's going in the direction of decreasing Z. Uh, that's Y. Y is the one labeled Y. Okay, so let's say it's going in the direction of decreasing Y. And I'm going to do this, I guess, as a function of Y, just because of how I drew the coordinate system. Um, okay, so say the path is... Um, or what's called a parameterization of the path is that the position vector as a function of y is equal to, we have a circular path in the x, z plane. And so let's say it's um, the simplest one you could do is like cosine y, y, sine y. And let's say the speed capital V is, um, let's say that that's uh, two. Uh, two y. We'll make it dependent on the height. Okay, I don't know what kind of motion this represents. You know, um, it definitely doesn't represent something falling under the influence of gravity because it's getting faster as you go higher, which is the opposite of what happens with conservation of energy. But, you know, uh, weird things happen when you get into tiny uh, distances or whatever. So, um, Okay, so uh, we have the parameterization. Um, the velocity 
vector as a function of y is going to be equal to uh, the speed times a unit vector in the direction of motion. So um, we need to come up with that unit vector. And uh, one, like, the thing you have to remember is that if you have any parameterization of a position vector, the position as a function of any single parameter, the derivative of the vector with respect to that parameter is tangent to the path in the direction of increasing parameter. Well, so we'll get to that in a second. But a vector in the direction of, um, so a, a vector that at every point along this, at every y value is tangent to the path here, is equal to um, derivative of cosine y with respect to y, negative sine, derivative of y with respect to y, one, and derivative of sine y, so cosine y. Okay. And so it's hard to draw on this, but um, in the direction of increasing y, which means that it's tangent to the helix, but exactly opposite of the velocity vector. Okay, that's, we have to deal with that because of the fact that we have our parameter decreasing here. And so that's where this negative comes in. Um, so this is in the direction of the velocity vector, but it's not a unit vector, it's not unit length. Length. And um, the reason we need it to be a unit vector is because we need something that's in the direction tangent to that helical path and has a magnitude that's equal to the speed, because that's a velocity vector. Um, and if we multiply the speed times something that doesn't have unit length, we obviously end up with a vector that doesn't have the magnitude of v. Okay, so we need to we need to normalize this, get get a unit vector form of this. So um, the magnitude of u. Um, so this is positive sine, negative one, negative cosine y. Um, the magnitude is sine squared y plus one uh, plus cosine squared y. And the thing that is nice about this helical path is that sine squared y plus cosine squared y is equal to one. So this turns out to just be square root of two. Okay, yes. Any sine squared plus cosine squared of anything, as long as it's the same thing for both of them is one. Um, okay, and so now we'll multiply that by, so our unit vector is um, uh, positive sine y over square root of 2, uh, negative 1 over square root of 2, uh, negative cosine y over square root of 2. Now that's a unit vector that's tangent to the path. And so the velocity vector as a function of y is equal to this times the speed. And the speed was 2y. So we get 2y sine y over square root of 2 
negative 2y over square root of 2 and negative 2y cosine y over square root of 2. And now we're done with really the conceptually hard stuff. And now we're just using the chain rule formula. So finally, we're at, you know, after all that, which wasn't as hard as that hard to do, but it was like, you know, in general, it's um, We're finally at the point where the, some of the problems start. We have the velocity vector as a function of y. Let me make clear that that's lowercase. Um, and so now the acceleration as a function of y is equal to dv dy dy dt. And that's equal to dv dy times uh, dy dt is just the y component of the velocity vector, so negative 2y over square root of 2. Um, this thing is a vector, and this thing is a scalar. So you get what you, you would expect, a vector, an acceleration vector for a given value on y. Any questions about that one? Any other questions overall? Or homework questions? Okay. Well, mm, let's just do the quiz. Okay. So, yeah, get ready for the test. It's on Monday. It's, it doesn't have any forces, masses, any of that stuff. It's just particle kinematics.